بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم افتح لنا أبواب حكمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علمك اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك على كل شيء قدير I salute you all with a salutation of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I don't know why I was invited to come and speak amongst these giants, the icons. But nevertheless, I thought maybe organizers wanted to have an element of a local touch. And what a better way to have a local touch with someone who doesn't fit in at all. <laughs> the looks are deceiving. Speaking English in itself is a surprise. Talking about open minds in the world today, where the media has almost tarnished the image of people like me, are the people who are supposed to be being uh, looked after, maybe by the CIA somewhere in Guantanamo, somewhere. <laughs> However, life has to move on. So instead of Richard Branson, you have the privilege to listen to me. <laughs> Maybe with the different types of parachute. <laughs> People have difficulties pronouncing my name, and I usually like to call my name Khalfan, which rhymes with have fun. So let us have fun together <laughs> for the afternoon. What a better challenge than to speak after lunch, after a big meal, so my job is to keep you awake and to make sure that I entertain you as much as uh, I try to challenge your minds to make sure that we keep our minds open for something maybe that we can take away as much as I have been taking away this morning. Let us talk in the context of Oman first. Oman is now at a crossroads. The good old days of the 40 years of putting the foundation in place the infrastructure is almost over. The next challenge ahead of us is about the human capital. This symposium, this seminar, this gathering was initially intended to invite the youngsters of today, the leaders of tomorrow, to try and learn the wisdom of how things are made, to try and move out of the comfort zone, to challenge the status quo, to be innovative, to be creative, and to go beyond the boundaries. Somewhere along the organizational period, things didn't go well. And now I have to speak to the, the converts, people who understand what it is that they have to do to be where they are. Nevertheless, probably the message is those who are beginning to embark on the journey of success will get something. And those who are there, please, whatever I say, take it as ammunition for you to go and energize, inspire, empower those who could not make it today. And I'm going to start with a story. It's a story that I usually tell whenever I meet the youngsters. And probably through the story, majority of you can reflect and can relate to the story. It's a story of a baby elephant. It's a story of the elephant that is kept in the zoo. Zookeepers wanted to have an elephant. But rather than capture a big elephant that is difficult to tame, difficult to train, they thought, why don't we start with a baby elephant? So they embarked to the, to the jungles, caught a baby elephant, brought it to the zoo. Initially, the baby didn't like the environment. It didn't cooperate. It played hard. And then they said, we're going to teach you a lesson. They took the baby elephant to a dark room, tied it to chains. And in those chains, they had some sharp nails. So every time the baby elephant wanted to break away from the chains, these sharp nails would pierce the skin and cause a lot of pain. Day one of struggle a lot of pain, day two of struggle with a lot of pain, day three of struggle, struggle with a lot of pain, eventually the baby elephant made a decision. And the decision was, I cannot break free 
from these chains. So three days passed by, the baby elephant stopped resisting. Zookeepers removed the nails. Baby elephant woke up in the morning, felt the chain, and stopped resisting. Few more days passed by, they replaced the chain with a piece of rope. The baby elephant woke up in the morning, felt the, chain, the, the rope, something on the foot, and then he said, I cannot break free, it didn't resist. Time passed by, it's two years down the road, the baby elephant now is bigger, is stronger. Whenever it's set free, it moves around. Whenever they put a small rope on its foot, it stops resisting. Seven years down the road, now the baby elephant is a big elephant. It can uproot trees from its roots. It can topple cars. It can do wonderful things. However, it cannot free itself from a very single thin, tiny rope. Why? Because of a decision made sometime in the past. What's the moral of the story here? The baby elephant made a decision and stuck with the decision. We as human beings, we were born free, independent, and we were born with an open mind, willing to take all challenges of life. Then through our upbringing, whether at home, at school, in society, these ropes are introduced into us. They are not on our feet, but they are in our minds. The first thing you learn, the minute you begin to crawl and you try to touch that very expensive vase of your mother or those plants, the first thing you get is a smack. It develops. You see them sipping a cup of coffee. You try to touch it. What happens? You get another one. You see them holding a knife. You try to hold it. What do they do to you? You get another one. And then you get told, don't. Uh-uh, don't. And then as a result, we grow with many of these ropes in our minds that tell us, you cannot do it. You are not meant to be. This is not for you. How many of you can relate to that? Please take 30 seconds, just look at your neighbor and ask them, do you still have those ropes? If you do, it's time to let them go. 30 seconds, please. Speak to your neighbor. OK. Thank you for sharing that. Now, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that you know that there are plenty of ropes out there, and there's even more ropes out there. The bad news, no one can remove those ropes except yourself. We talk about SMEs today here. With SMEs, need I talk about the legislations and the difficulties of getting licenses, about trying to break through the market to get to the clients, the barriers that you're going to face? All those are the ropes that are telling you it's not for you. The more you listen to those ropes and you accept them and you make a decision that is difficult, it's undoable, you are finished. Culturally, we have plenty of ropes. Socially, we have plenty of ropes. In the, competi in the competitive world, where we are trying to compete with the big players, there are plenty of ropes. One thing I have learned from the morning speakers is this. To be successful, you need to have a call. You need to have found your call to life. The call to life, call it a mission, call it a vision, call it passion. If you don't have it, it will not ignite the fire within you. Yesterday, one of our friends wanted to attend the session, but he said, I can't afford it. And I said, the minute you say, I can't afford it, you've already set the limit, the barrier. Rather than say, why? Rather than say, I can't afford it, 
The right question would have been, how can I afford it? So it's not the barriers that we ought to think of, it's how to succumb to that voice and not to listen to it, but to overcome that voice. Oman 2040, what do I see before me? The landscape is changing in Oman, the landscape is changing in the region, and the landscape is changing in the world. Globally, forces are shifting, and they're shifting big time, be it economical forces or political forces. The BRICS, as an example, the BRIC, or the, is, is coming forward, the BRICS. And that is the Brazilians, the Russians, the Indians, Chinese, and South Africans, they are now coming together. So we are seeing shof, shift of forces, economical and political power. If we talk about regionally, the region is not going to be stable for the next 10 to 20 years because of the mess that we have created ourselves, be it in Iraq, in Syria, in Palestine, in Egypt, in Libya, in Yemen, and those problems that have been created will not disappear overnight. Oman has been spared from those disorders that have happened. Oman has been despaired from those cal calamities that have happened in those places. The question is, can we capitalize on what we are good at in Oman to take advantage of stability, security, open mind, kind and gen generous people, strategically located in a very important place with all the infrastructures in place? What can we do to go forward? Oman also is changing. The landscape in Oman is changing. Politically, the forces are shifting as well. With the 